forgive the background noise. Uh, I'm not processing right now. I'm trying something. Uh, I'm trying my best to make every single microphone I have sound like this one. This is my Rode NT1. I think this thing was made for my voice. I don't have to do anything to make it sound good. I love it. Thing is, I like I the idea of getting a good EQ match, and so I think I got one. Uh, for example, if we switch over, this is the AT2035, after it's been EQ matched to my Rode NT1. Uh, let's switch back to the NT1, which is this right here, and then... Uh, it's a sort of AB for you. I don't think the gain is uh, perfectly dead on. It's close, and so I'm interested to see how far we can take it. So let me show you how my process. So the first one, uh, I'm not gonna, I was going to get a camera and show you this, but I can't be bothered. Basically, I have a studio monitor. It's a KRK Rocket 8 Gen 4, and I have a microphone. I put the microphone in front of the studio monitor. I make sure the capsule is in between the top of the speaker and the bottom of the tweeter. After that, I have these on a microphone arm as well, a little stand in a, in a sh uh, hopefully you can have a shock mount that would be the best result and then I just grab a Dasani water bottle and I put it on the studio monitor and then I and I just move the fucking microphone forward until the the grill touches the bottle <laughs> and so that way I know that each mic is at least one Dasani away from the studio monitor I know I'm very scientific and then after that I just gain match them and then we're good I record a uh, I, rec I have a I'll, I'll just throw it in the description the the file of pink noise that I use I start that from zero on each of the recordings. I record that through the monitor. Same gain, same distance, all that shit through each mic. And uh, yeah, let me show you what that sounds like. All right, so this is an Audio Technica AT2020. Uh, I did a EQ match video with it, but I'm not too satisfied with it. I'm not, I haven't been too satisfied with any of these EQ matches, so I'm redoing them all. And I've made the uh, V7 and the XM8500 as good as I can, as well as the AT2035. Now let's do that with the AT2020. And here's how I do it. So I have two tracks here, mic left, mic right. You can see I have both recordings on there. One's for NT1 and one's for AT2020. These are my pink noise. I'll get it to where, just so it's fair, so where our, both of our ears get destroyed, I'll get it to where we can both hear it. This sounds like that. Hey dig, noisy, blah, blah, blah. And so what I'm gonna do is I have, first off, we can actually check out the difference, right? If I turn these off and I turn just span on here, we can see the right side is going to be the AT2035 and the left side is the Rode NT1. And you can see that the 2035, more low end and less high end. It's essentially a tilt. Uh, so let's do one match and we'll see how much better it gets. So with just one on there, How's it looking? So after just the one, it took it from being very inaccurate to being this close. After that, just for good measure, I'd do another one. I don't usually do more than like two or three. I like to do multiple because I find that gets the best result. But then after two, it looks like this. That is pretty much on point. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna ditch the pink noise now. I have two math audios. I'm gonna group them. I'm gonna take that group and I'm gonna throw it on the AT2020. So now it's, it, this is the AT2020 and this is the Rode NT1. Now if we switch between the, you can see, not there, man. And that's when I, that's where I take the, uh, that's where I start talking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these uh, to be pretty much matched in terms of gain, which this one actually has to come down right there. All right, so I have them both gain matched. And now what I'm gonna do is pan it over, send it to F, and I'm gonna re I'm gonna take a look at it with span first. And so we can see the this time the right side is going to be the NT1. Uh yeah. No, we're missing a lot of mid frequencies. So now now's when the retard stuff happens. Flip this. I'm gonna start talking. So I'm just gonna talk into uh, the center in between the NT1 and the AT2035, just so we can get a sort of baseline and let it kind of build off of my voice because that's what I'm mainly going to be using this for and we can see there's a big difference there. So we're going to take that, we're going to toss it here and we're going to we're going to hear that make a drastic change. You can hear it instantly got closer. And now is the kind of interestingly retarded part. I'm just going to start making retard noises. Uh, I know, I know what you're thinking. This guy's fucking retarded. But you know what? Just wait, <laughs> just wait till the end. Wait till it sounds identical. <laughs> At this point, I'm just gonna talk more, and I'm gonna have the uh, the low end and stuff. It seems counterintuitive to do this, but I promise it's actually unironically solid. And the more the more that I do this, the closer it's gonna end up getting. Especially if I just after that, 
right? Let's go look at span again. This is how it looks with span on. Uh, you can see the accuracy is drastically improved. And so let's do like one more of these, one or two. Uh, the reason I do that is because it's kind of like a frequency sweep. I know it's not, but it's kind of like it. I don't know. It's hard to explain my my methodology. It's it's hard to follow. You know, it's uh, I uh, I'm trying to avoid husses. Yeah, because I don't want any air to hit the castle. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't want any air to hit the capsule, so I'm trying to avoid plosives. <laughs> These that would make it inaccurate because one of them might have more resistance to plosives than the other. Just for the last couple, you know, after these, uh, this is probably the last one I'm gonna do. Uh, there it is, I'm tired of doing it. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's pretty accurate right out of the gate anyway. So after that's done, now we can go look at uh, span and we can see how accurate it is at this point. And uh, I can see, see there's the plosives I was talking about, by the way. You can see it in the low end there. That was causing some issues, me blowing. Breathing it's causing problems. So the only real difference is some high end and I can live with that, you know less high end I, I don't mind that at all. I'd say and we can flip the phase on it to determine how accurate it really is like is it uh, well, hold on. We can determine that it is pretty fucking accurate with how much it's flipping that phase out homie. You can barely fucking hear me And so yeah, here is the yeah, this is the AT2035 and this is the Rode NT1. If I do an AB and I just talk, go in between the two microphones and you can see that I am doing an AB because it's happening in real time in Ableton. The difference is definitely there. There's always going to be a difference, but you're not picking that up on headphones. Let me show off all of the microphones I've done. So this is the AT2035 and this is the Rode NT1. This is the Audio-Technica AT2035 and this is the Rode NT1. This is an SEV7 EQ Master Rode NT1, and this is just a Rode NT1. This is the Rode NT1, and this is the Behringer XM8500 with an EQ match on it. And ultimately I decide that uh, if you were to put these in a mix, and process them ever so slightly, and not have a tile in the background, you wouldn't notice. So there's that. Uh, I'm going to turn the ones that I had just made today, which is the 2035 and the uh, 2020, into impulse responses and accidentally kill a moth on my desk oops rest in peace and uh i'll put those in the description alongside the pink noise recording so you can fuck with us on your own and uh yeah thanks for watching and please subscribe